My name is Christy Busby, and you are about to listen to the next episode of my podcast called Fate, from Atheism to Enlightenment. So come on in, join me. We're going to talk about it all, from Atheism to Enlightenment. Alrighty, guys, here we go. Get ready, and welcome to your fate. Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of Fate. How is everybody doing today? On today's show, I have Paul Nugent. He has a book out called Meyer Meyer, Spiritual Journey into Cosmic Truth and the Dawning of a New World. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get into some deep stuff today. Paul Nugent, welcome to your Fate, my friend. How are you doing today? Well, thank you very much, Christy. I, I'm doing very well. It's, um, I've been looking forward to having this conversation, and uh, it's a lovely day here in Michigan, and so all is good. All is well, good. like I said, I, uh, I grew up in Michigan. I am a Michigander at heart, so I, uh, what part of Michigan are you recording from? I'm in a small town called Hazel Park, oh. which you may know. It's a little bit north of, a um, little bit north of, um, Detroit and snow is the yes. friendly city. And uh, it seems I do, I do know. You know, everybody in Michigan's great. Shout out to Michiganders, man. Shout out. Um, so I read your book and I found it to be fascinating, fantastical, even adaptable to a movie. People would love it. I'm very excited to talk about everything that you speak of in the book. And thank you in advance for bringing it to me and my audience. And let's get into it, shall we? Um, so this book, it is your spiritual journey from the time that you were a boy in England to coming upon this society. And can you, just so I don't flub the name of this society, can you, can you say what the society is? Sure, it's called the Ethereus Society. The Ethereus Society. So it is your journey from the Ethereus Society and, and, and coming upon this gentleman named George King, the master of this organization that is, I would say, a channeler of sorts, an interdimensional being. And um, let's just start at the beginning. When you speak of yourself and you're, when you were a boy in England, you referenced several times in the book that you knew things where you were born. I found that to be interesting, and I wanted to ask you exactly what you felt like. What what did that mean exact, exactly when you were kept on referencing, I knew this before I was born? What did that mean? That's right. Um, the book is in two parts. In part one, it's called The Things I Knew Before I Was Born. And... Um, I mean, I always, but by saying that, I mean, I was very much uh, embraced the concept of, of reincarnate. Mm. Uh, we've all lived before. And there's a certain intuitive knowledge that we all have. And you could say even, um, you know, in certain cases, there's a sort of a, a sense of a certain destiny that we all intuitively know. Uh, and I think it's, you know, terribly important to you to pay attention to those things, um, which, which, you know, you could say go way back. I mean, it's part of our culture. So I've no, no right from wrong, but certainly, yes, uh, I intuitively knew certain things. I think I, we all do. Um, we don't necessarily always pay attention to them, but, um, I did and did it, uh, by doing so. Um, it, it has fundamentally directed the, the course of my life in the best possible way. I, I had the feeling that that was your, um, your meaning is that y you knew this before you were born as in, the, in that sense, but it was good to get your interpretation because I also feel, I feel like I have an inner knowing of things myself. I don't say it in the same way that it, I knew it before I was born. But I certainly feel like we all come into our lives 
knowing certain things deep within without having any real logical reason why we know these things. We just, we just do. We just do. You just yeah, do. Indeed. Indeed. So th the title of your book is Meyer Meyer. Why, what, what does that mean? What's the origin of the title? What exactly does that mean? Well, Maya, M-A-Y-A, -A, is a Sanskrit word, uh, which is the oldest language, sorry, one of the, not the oldest language, all that, uh, the Rajogin from the East India, I'm asking. Um, and it means illusion. Uh, and Maya, M-I-R-E, uh, is like the quag, is like the quagmire. Uh, and so the title comes from, I mean, the book is, is about, um, the pool where we are, how we came to be as we are, uh, where we are in the world today, which I think, you know, I think we can all see as a world full of problems and, and I sort of make out also because we've gone down a cul-de-sac, we've lost this sort of far greater vision and understanding of what we are. And, and we sort of are playing out in a, in a world of, in, a, in, in, not in, I can't, when I say a false world, um, we don't see, um, uh, we don't see the beauty and the greatness and the vastness of what we really are a part of. We see the things that we're sort of conditioned to see. And, and so we, 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 we're living, uh, in this very limited way. And as a consequence of that, we've created this rather, well, certainly not even. This is a very dysfunctional world, as in the, the mind and in quark mind we that we certainly we're in. are. I mean, I reference like, you know, kind of a 3D matrix world where we are so hyper-focused on things that don't seem to matter really in our lives. We don't know who we are. We don't know our real history. And through reading your book, it spoke to me a lot about, it makes, to me, your story makes more sense to me than what we have been taught throughout our life as far as how we got here. And and I don't think there's any historical book that has really accurately portrayed exactly who we are and how we began. <laughs> and um, <laughs> this is a very complicated story. It has many layers. And, you know, you, you discuss the origins of humanity and where we originated from. Can we start there and talk a little bit about the planet called Maldek and what that was and what happened? Um, sure. Um, our understanding, we're not alert, I'm not saying our understanding of our brain in that sense, to be understanding of theirs, it's serious, it's um, which is a non-profit metaphysical spiritual organization, international. Um, we're not alone. Um, with the theosophists uh, and you know doubt throughout history, but he, he, our understanding is that we came to us over 18 million years ago from a planet also in our solar system, which we destroyed through the intense misuse of atomic power. That planet was known as Maldek. All that remains of Maldek is the asteroid belt which is these, you know, floating pieces of massive pieces of floating rock, um, between Mars and Jupiter. Now, um, you know, it's, it's, well, actually there's, there, there's a tremendous growing evidence if, you know, because you're obviously you're sort of scientists, physicists, some of them, or well, I'd say all, on the whole, they tend to perhaps dispute that, but there is an increasing amount of evidence that's coming to light on how in, how that actually probably was, was a planet. Um, there's a, I mean, there, I, I don't go into it in, in, in the book, um, but there's a, the largest, one of the largest pieces of the asteroid belt, uh, is a metallic core that is found at the, at the, at the, um, set of all planets, unit physicists. Um, and it also fits in, uh, there was a man back in the sort of 1700s or eight called Boat, who came up with the sequence of Nava, Nava, it's known as Boat's Law. Actually, it wasn't there. His name to be given that was another chap. But it's using a remarkable sequence of numbers. This is what they used to find some of the outer planets in our solar system. But the, the planets are all sort of lined up according to this, you know, 
uh, sequence of numbers, and there should be a planet exactly between Mars and Jupiter where the asteroid belt is. But there isn't. What, what there is is, is the, dis the destruction. And our understanding, as I say, is that we, we destroyed that planet over 18 million years ago. And yet, you can't look at things so, uh, solely in a sort of materialistic way, because fundamentally, um, you have to look at it in spiritual way. And when you look at anything, in it, when you look at anything in a spiritual way, in a true sense, it's all absolute oneness. And so being a part of oneness, we couldn't be taken out of creation. Nothing could be taken. Um, we're all, we're all an integral part of this one divine being that we tend to call God, um, that sprang out of nowhere and nothing, um, well, then we look, we've got the big bang over 13, 30, 20 billion years, but even they're having trouble with that now, the James Webb teles um, space yeah. telescope, um, because what was before that, um, and I, you go into that as well, not so much in a scientific, but more in a sort of metaphysical, spiritual way in the book, the great outbreeding and inbreeding of God. So Maldek, eight, eight, which 18 and a half million, 18 odd million years ago, again, strikes us as being a very long time. Uh, in cosmic time, uh, um, it's actually not very long ago. Um, and so we needed somewhere else to reincarnate, to continue with this evolutionary journey that all of creation is, is making. And this Earth was a prose, and um, all the other planets were already to evolve um, in our solar system, um, and the earth as a conscious living intelligence, we're far more evolved than we are. Um, we, we, you know, I mean, in the same way that it was a man now contemplating human intelligence or in the other things, uh, we struggled to sort of recognize though on the whole Western man, indigenous man doesn't, yeah. he gets it, but, um, Western man struggles to sort of appreciate that actually everything is living, including this, this, this mother earth and, um, he's withheld herself. I mean, this is the major part of the whole story, but she has withheld herself for our sake. Um, and we've had, I'm really jumping ahead a bit here, but we've had two previous civilizations in the last 18 million years of the Muir era and Atlantis, both of which we destroyed, much likely done with Maldi, not quite so intense, uh, through the misuse of the toroid palm. And there we were again, in the middle of the last century, the end of the second world war, once again, toying with this very sacred energy within the after for, for extremely negative and destructive purposes, uh, using it. And, um, you know, it was at the same time in, in that period, even fifties and sixties that, well, actually the term flying saucer became known as a flying saucer, but it was, a, it was a time of intense, uh, it was the great sort of science flying, flying through the theory because these being from the higher dimensions, particularly within our own solar system, who'd watched over us since Maldo, even before Maldo, but certainly since Maldo. And here we were again, um, threatening not only to destroy ourselves, but threatening to destroy the planet. And um, so that's a very good part of the old full story. Lemuria in Atlantis, how long ago were those civilizations destroyed? Do you have any? I don't remember you actually giving that a time frame in the book. Well, I, I, I don't, Timmy. As I do say in the book, hard evidence is scant. This is one of the things that one has to take uh, in, on an intuitive sense. Although, I mean, there are references to, to some to Atlantis, well, both Atlantis and the New York, but, you know, when everybody gets to the story, it's hard to sit with them, you know, figure it all out. Um, I think the estimate is that for Atlantis was sort of two to 300,000 years ago. Uh, and the Muria probably at least a million years ago. Um, but again, I like to put, I, in the book, I put this into some kind of context um, because we, science will tell us that the earth is roughly about four and a half billion years old, which again is, is very massive period of time, difficult for us to understand. 
But if we were to liken that to being 24 hours, in other words, a day, when the earth was born, Mother Earth yourself came to be, um, then Malda, 18 uh, odd million years ago, was the last six oh, wow. minutes, you know, since we've been you know, having this conversation. Uh, and Lemuria was less than one minute ago. And Atlantis was in the last few seconds. So it, so it helps us to sort of wrap our heads around it uh, and understand the time frame. Uh, it is all in a cosmic skiing, uh, relatively recent, uh, but yet here we are again, um, of course, coming out of, well, during the, uh, the Cold War, we went on to about the Heidi's of War, infinitely more powerful than the Atom War. Uh, and this is the world in which we exist. This is the Maya, the quote Maya. Uh, all as it had coming out of the mayor or the Maya of a huge, having forgotten what we really are a part of. We're a part of God. I mean, the whole thing needs to be sort of reversed 180 degrees to realize and appreciate the, uh, the, the beauty of, of everything, of the wholeness of which we are a part. Yes, I completely agree. And when you think about humanity, you talk a little bit about why we continue to go along this destructive path. And you talk about mm. free will and the fact that we were given free will and what it has done mm. to allow us to feel like we are separate, to, um, to mm. induce fear, to induce um, mm -hmm. this incessant need for, I'm going to say men, because you don't really see this a lot, in the feminine divine men you know this over uh wanting to dominate each other wanting to feel superior to one another like we can't seem to evolve past these uh egotistical needs to feel number one or the best or dominant or superior and it leads to terrible outcomes um why don't you talk a little bit about what free will that whole concept that you go into in the book. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because this is really the root of it all, uh, and saying it's the root of it, of it all. I mean, it, you know, our, it, in the Western um, civilization and our sort of main, main faiths, the Jewish faiths, the, well, the, what they know as the Abrahamic faiths, Jewish faiths, Christian faiths, and, and, and the Islamic faith, um, all go back to what we refer to, or what they with what is referred to as the Garden of Eden, um, this mythological garden. Uh, well, I'm in the case, I mean, not trying to sort of be clever here or anything like that, but, but that was Malda. In, it, that was Malda. In God, so to speak, um, allows for every, including yeah. free will. There's an allowance for free will. Um, when, we, when we take the path of free will, the temptation, so to speak, as you know, as you, in the allegory of the, of we put the garden in, um, what actually happens is that we find that we are, we see ourselves as being separate from God, separate from the wholeness, the, the nakedness, the shame, the embarrassment, uh, and which we sort of try to cover up um, with lies uh, because the sensation that arises out is a sensation of guilt, which we didn't know we had. We were innocent. It was, in, it was pure innocent. Um, and yet we, we, we chose to go down these other paths, um, thinking, God, God only knows what we were the geek, but thinking that um, we'll, 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 what came out of it um, was separation and everything, um, has re announced at the roots. That's the, uh, the roots of our ignorance it, because, it, um, we're, we're ignorant of what we really are a part of. We're, 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 we're ignorant of the wholeness and the oneness of everything. And that has led to, uh, uh competition particularly, uh, which, you know, gets into 
we and mine and, and better than and, and can culminate in more and ultimately, with, with, you know, with the mirror that that is destroying ourselves. You t- I yes. mean, we're still at it. We're still at it. Uh, and um, so it's necessary to, it, instead of using free will, which we all can do, I, you know, I've got free will to you, as you do, to, so to, to turn off this program that we're, that we're here at, you know, we will have that. I have got no temptation to do that at all because of it and choice. But it, because my divine will, or rather my higher will, you see, my conscience, the need is to, we, God gave us this wonderful thing in the beginning, in the get go, you could say, of a conscience. And, um, you know, it's just innate in all of us. Um, I think one could probably go through extremes where one covers it up so much that, um, which is, it becomes extremely dangerous, and not only for the individual, but for the, those around you and the individual, and this possibly even inherently the world as a whole. But um, so long as we can keep in touch with our cultures, that inner voice of, of, of truth, of knowing this, coming back to the thing that you poor Evans book, um, which is inherent, let's say, within us, that then we're acting more out of, the, uh, out of a higher will, or you could even say a divine will. And that is, it's, it's harking on, it's, it's listening to that eating that will get us to, to get back onto the so-called straight and narrow, which, which are actually though is the path to the yes. UNH, the wisdom in life. Yes. Before we go into the Arthurian Arthur- society and we start getting into your experiences there and what you've learned and all that. You reference the Akashic, Akashic records in the book a lot, and I find I find that um, an interesting topic just to bring up. It's not a huge part of the book, but it is a term that not a lot of people are aware of. It's not something that mm-hmm. you hear often out there in the in the in in mainstream. And can you tell me what those are? And um, Explain what the Akashic records are. Akashic, yeah, Akashic records. records. See, I don't even know how to. Akashic I don't even know how to pronounce it. Yeah, that's that, that's fine. I'm very glad you brought it up. Uh, well, again, this comes out of the Sanskrit, um, and it's it's um. How can one describe it? Um, it's a rec- It's a it's a complete record, a cosmic record, um, of every, it's, it's, you see, even when we, even in knowing our free, using free will, there's still a part of us, that conscience, that knowingness, that knows that it, it, from God, um, there are, there are no secrets with God. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is hidden. And that is the Akashic record. We can you know, temporarily trick each other and see each other and lie to each other and pretend and whatever else. But that fundamental truth is timeless. And our only way of probably, you know, regarding it is as a record. It's, it's, um, it's, 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 it's a constant. It's a, it's, it's a constant. There are some people that um, say that they can access those records and actually retrieve <laughs> information on a regular basis. They can tap into that sort of frequency, that realm, wh- however their mm. um, sixth, mm-hmm. seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth sense can, can manage. Um, but I always thought that the, the Akashic, Akashic records, Akashic, 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 Akashic Records was a um, fascinating <laughs> topic, principle, and it is extremely hard to define. But, y- you know, the record of all that ever is and ever was is kind of what I would say, you know, it it relates to. Well, if I may just yes. comment on that, um, very brief, but to be able to read the Akashic Record. Um, demonstrates um, a highly evolved soul, a, 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 a very developed soul, um, and 
such a, such a, an, a soul who is, who is able to read the Akashic record, um, almost certainly would not reveal and certainly not reveal on an individual basis what it was, con it's too holy, it's too sacred. And, um, so it tends to sort of be misused perhaps as a way of showing off. Um, one would be uh, only a, a, a proven master would be able to read the Akashic record. And even that a proven master would, would be extremely cautious. They would know if it was the right time or not the right time. And probably it was never the, well, hardly ever the right time to reveal that information. Uh, and in the same way, um, it's, it's, um, generally except in very exceptional cases, um, wrong to, if, if one has a sense of another person's previous life, you, um, it, one should almost certainly never reveal that and not even reveal that they know. Interesting. If, if, if that made sense. So, you know, because it's, it's easy and, and popular to sort of fandy these things about. Um, but you're dealing with, you see, whenever you're dealing with something as sacred as that, it's very, very, very rarely used. And one was, should, should be very, you know, somewhat skeptical uh -huh. of what anybody is, is, is said. I mean, you, you know, ask, ask most women and they've been told that they were, you know, Cleopatra or something. Yeah. I mean, the world is little with Cleopatras. Uh, it's true. That's true. Which actually, if you're reading about Cleopatra, you wouldn't want to have been Cleopatra. But anyway, so, so, so I just say that, um, it's very sacred and it would only ever be re revealed in a very mystical, um, way in which if you were receiving that information, your issue, you would have to feel totally right about what was being said and who was saying it and why. Because it probably does. There's a reason. There's a reason that these things are locked up. But why we right. don't have them? Because otherwise, the, we go around seeking revenge on everyone. You did this to me, my last time. You know, you owe me. You know, I, sure. all that kind of stuff. No, because sure. we care. So, well, what well, what well, well, one could, um, reveals or conveys this information with extreme caution. Good note, understood, and that makes complete sense. And I think that we've lost the we've lost touch with the ability to feel something is sacred and that it should not be um, transgressed. I think we've lost touch of that feeling in our world altogether. It seems like nothing is um, sacred anymore. That's what it feels like. I love the way, I, it, 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 I, I couldn't agree with you more, and I like the way you use that word, yes. transgress. We have, and, and, this, and the consequence is, is that there are the horrible that we live yeah. in, the Maya. Mm -hmm. We forgotten that we're part of something utterly yes. sacred, utterly beautiful, utterly divine, utterly fantastic, yes. utterly incredible. Yes. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it needs to be rekindled. And that's what I've attempted to do in the book, my mind. I love that. Let's, um, let's get into your life's work in the Arter Arteria Society. Arteria Society. Machine. A, a, a curious, a curious, a curious. Yes. I'm so sorry. All right, you know, we can print this mm -hmm. part. Um, full disclosure, I actually live eight minutes from the Aetherius Society. I, I live in Hollywood, and when I was reading your book, and I was, you know, finding out that it was in Hollywood and on Afton Place, and I was like, wait a second. So I, I Googled it and it's literally 1.8 miles away, the Hollywood, um, church, the, the spiritualist church. Yeah, well, the American the headquarters, headquarters yes. absolutely. And, and please go and yeah. say hello. Um, uh, y yes, that, um, the Aetherius Society has had its headquarters in Hollywood since 19, well, certainly since 1960 and, and been on that particular site since 1965. And that's where the, the founder, the, the, the master of yoga, Dr. George King resided for, well, certainly up until he died in 1997, well, then there's latter years. 
he was 100 miles north in Santa Barbara, which is where I was one of the deep in Blessed. Fruit is enough to be taken yes. care of. In, in. Well, let's start, let's start with that story of, of, gosh, it is a, it's a, it's, it's a detailed story, but why don't we go ahead and talk about what this, what the Aetherist Society is and mm. who George King was to that society, to you in general. Um, I feel like that's probably the next question that we should, um, get into and discuss. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, well, don't you, you George King was born in, in England in, in Bristol, Shropshire, housing called Shropshire in England in 1919. Uh, he was very psychically gifted as a child. There's nothing particularly acceptable about that. He was only, I would say. Um, and then in 1939, along came the Second World War. Uh, he was 20 years of age, a single man, uh, expected to go and fight for his country. Uh, and he wouldn't fought for his country. Um, you know, he recognized obviously that Nazism was a, an evil force, force that, um, you know, was doing no good. And, um, however, he knew coming back to one's conscious and divine will, that there is a, a grace of law, which says thou shalt not kill. And. He, and he, he knew that that was more important. I mean, that was the, the law to be obeyed. So he was a conscientious objector, but as I say, he recognized that the, the Nazis needed to be, you know, pushed back and repelled than whatever else. And so, and he wants to serve. Mm -hmm. So he joined the fire brigade, uh, in London, uh, but, and then along came what's known as the Blitz, which was, which was the bombing of civilians in London. So he, he witnessed very much firsthand the, the, the insanity of war, um, and, and, and the destruction of, or the bombing of people in their homes, babies, children, you know, the elderly, uh, and he was used to rushing into these burning, crumbling buildings to rescue these people. And as I say, you could just sort of see the, the, the madness, the humanity, the chaos of why? Why, why, why is this world like this? And, um, it's certainly during that period, um, in some time in the second world war, or not immediately afterwards, uh, he began to study and practice yoga, which was, I mean, I know it's a common word now, but back in Britain before his fifties, it, it, it wasn't, uh, and he was very serious about it. Um, he was practicing various forms of the primarily what's called pranayama or yoga breathing, uh, as well as mantra yoga, um, and hatha yoga for up to eight hours a day over, over a 10 year period. Yeah. So he was very intense about it. And, um, when you are that intense, um, and I can't speak from personal experience, most I've ever really done is two hours a day. And, uh, uh, I know that two hours of, of sort of yoga, of, pre, of mantra and the other breathing and prayer, um, you, you're beginning to go in quite deep, relatively speaking. So, and, um, but what it must be to do eight hours, I've no idea, but you know, you, you're certainly are shifting your whole mind, consciousness, everything. And to do that over a 10 year theory, well, the consequence of that is that the force that we all have with the base of the spine, or the Kundalini, with all the Sanskrit word, um, uh, all of these terms, uh, uh, Sanskrit words, because the Yogis, they understood this, this stuff, but the, the main, the main reason we're here on earth is to raise Kundalini. Uh, and the Kundalini began to rise through a channel in the spine called the Sushumna channel, opening the chakras or the psychic centers that we all have in our aura connected to, 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 to uh, and he was able to raise the Kundalini to the higher centers, the, the Christ center, and ultimately the crown center. And when one is able to do that, well, it's, that's the goal of yoga. The yoga, again, Sanskrit word, which means union, coming back to the oneness. It's union with everything. It's union with God. It, it comes into a state of all knowingness, complete consciousness, a state of divine bliss. Uh, and he was able to attain that. Um, and yet at the same time, 
uh, it was, as I say, a sign that we call a wall, uh, where we went on about the high beam wall where we were testing mainly the, mainly the Americans and, uh, and the Soviets, the Brits and the French thrown in. But, uh, we got man. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it was also a time of flying saucer sightings, tremendous sightings, because there are these things from the higher dimensions of the other worlds who were going up or, you know, he's just playing with fire again. And then dealt with mankind, you just, you know, getting up to mischief, as we'd done in Atlantis and Lemuria and Melda. And yet they had this individual, George Key, who was able to go into this very elevated state of consciousness, yes. who was known as Samadhi. And one Saturday, May of 1954, um, he was um, in his, in his age 35, single man, um, and he heard this voice. Actually, I understand, we understand he was washing dishes. And he heard a voice which said, Prepare yourself. You are to become the voice of interplanetary parliament. Well, he'd never heard of interplanetary parliament. All he knew with his yogi experience and training was that what he'd heard was, was nothing imaginary. And he also knew that of um, having developed himself, that there was some pub, there, there was some greater purpose behind it. He just didn't understand what it meant. Uh, no one was able, of course, to have to explain it to him. And so a, a week later, he went back into his apartment. He could lock the door and said, I'm not coming out of his role until I understand what that message to me and what was all about. And a, an Indian yogi who was very much alive at the time, literally Manif came through his locked door. Yogis can do this. They can, you know, dematerialize and rematerialize. We all could if we knew what we were already doing. Um, so it was as, as their potential. And, um, anyway, this, this yoga master, uh, manifest, Keiku Dorko, sat opposite George King, who was in this, in his own deep state of meditation, and explained to him what their contact had been and gave him other yogic techniques to employ that would allow him to gain a um, rough call, medium ship, uh, would be higher in what he could intelligence, is far more evolved intelligence, um, existing on the higher dimensions of the other planets. And the person who had communicated through him was known as a theorist. We call him the master of theorists, uh, who we understand as a Venusian master. Again, got to understand high other dimensions as there are around this earth, where we go, will we die? Y um, yes, the physical body is dead, but the soul, very quiet. You will buy bread to either a higher level, so-called heavens, or a lower dimension, depending on our karmic pattern, the so-called hells. And um, so this was you know, George King, and he, with this ability to go into the Samad what we call a positive yogic somatic trance, uh, whereby these more evolved beings could communicate through him. And that's exactly how the Ethereum society grew up, um, with uh, most of which were recorded. And there were over 600 of these transmissions, uh, which took place. Um, your know, first recorded one, I think it was probably 19, was, was in 1955, mm -hmm. January of 19th, January 29th at the Caxton Hall, it's a big ball in London, um, where he would go. And um, these beings spoke through him uh, um, that were, as I say, their voice, not his voice, such that they could be physically recorded and were, for the most part. And um, as I say, the interior society has grown up around them and, um, you know, exists up to this present day. Uh, for the very simple reason that these teachings are incredibly profound and, and, and important. Um, and um, so that was George King. So the, in the book, George, um, for lack of a better word, he kind of partners with these other interdimension, interdimensional beings to take on certain operations in order to... Um, 
help Mother Gaia Earth in order to save uh, humanity in a, in, in energetically. There's all different types of missions that he enters into with these other interdimensional beings that um, saves Mother Earth, our, our humanity. Uh, can we talk a little bit about who he was working with, one of which you um, say was Jesus himself? And you, that's right. That's right. Um, in fact, it was that that brought me personally more than anything into the Ethereum Society, which was in the United Nations. I, I, I was meanwhile, I never heard of the Ethereum Society, but I was having, I went to a of crisis for the spiritual awakening. Uh, I was looking for answers again, you know, the things I knew before I was born. And um, I'd come up, you know, I'd read the first time with any seriousness the four Gospels. And it made a tremendous amount of sense to you. You know, I, I, okay, here is someone, Jesus Christ, who knew, who understood how you should rightly be living on this planet, what life was primarily about, how to live it correctly. And, and so I took all that very serious. But, and, and I need to come back to that a little bit later, but because of the, you know, his COVID masters and his missions, um, everything, there are two goalposts. One of them is Maldek. One of Maldek is incredibly important, this whole story, um, because it marks the beginning, if you like, where we fell away. It, the so-called garden of Eden. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier on, uh, you know, in, in the wellness of, of God, so to speak, um, we couldn't just be taken, we couldn't just be distorted because that divine us, that divine spark is in everything, including each and every one of us in, in each every aspect of, of, of creation. Um, so the mother of us, as they, that was approach and she, uh, evol an evolving intelligence herself, as I mentioned, agreed to accept us coming here. The consequence of that was that she had to withhold herself. No, she, um, which she did and has done for the, for the, the last six minutes. We go back to that, you know, 24 hour day period, but it's in it, you know, um, she's endured us and not only for those six minutes, but also through the destruction of Lemuria and Atlantis, all of which threw up tremendous, um, uh, radio, uh, radioactive material threatening her, you know, study the surface of, of her work, her cobra officer. Um, I liken it in the book to one of us being forced to not only hold our breath for a very long period of time, but to do so under duress at the same time. And by karmic law, this could not continue. Um, because, you know, this is where the other goalpost comes in, which is, which is Lania Kega. And I, one needs to read the book, and I hope people will to find understand this. But Lani Akea is, is another incredibly important aspect of this whole story. Lani Akea, very briefly, which is a Hawaiian word, means immense help, describes a super cluster of galaxies to which all life in this milky way, together with about a hundred thousand other galaxies, is moving towards the incredible phenomenal accelerating speed. This is the grand scheme. This is what is really happening um, in this outbreathing and inbreathing of God since the Big Bang. For this to know that, and you know the whole solar system, as we, which is living, because one has to bear in mind that everything is living in this oneness of creation. It's all alike. It's all conscious. It's all interrelated. One. It's actually only one intelligence. There's only actually one intelligence, and it is all that. connected. All of it and is connected. It's, it's yes. all utterly connected. And um, so the earth, who'd withheld herself, um, was going to be given a tremendous infusion of energy so that she could get to where she should have been and would have been had it not been for the folly and madness of mankind over 18 million years ago with the destruction of Mal, which inevitably had a tremendous bearing on this whole solar system. It shouldn't have happened. It should never have happened. It happened because of the choosing of free will and the ignorance of this entity called mankind. And 
So the, the, in terms of this, um, the, the earth being given a tremendous infused of energy that she had denied herself since Marvin, endured through Lemuria and Atlantis, was due to be given. And the consequence of that, this took place, this great cosmic initiation burn, took place in, in 1964. It wasn't, it, that was the major aspect of it. Um, and, and on July the 8th, which is why it's the holiest day in the Eucharist Southern calendar. Um, and the consequence of that is that the vibrations of this earth are changed. They're quickened and they're only going to change more and more rapidly. Um, as, as the, as the earth, the mother earth releases this higher frequency of any, and it was having an inevitable knock on effect on every, and it's, it, it's, you can already see it beginning to play out, not only the tremendous quicken, um, mm -hmm. or the, or, or virtually every, but in the sort of polarization and the fragmentation and the chaos of our world, not Rishi once that. But it's why these cosmic masters have intervened to help give us some tools that we can use together with the wisdom to mitigate the fallout and the circumstances. But we need to get with the program, the spiritual program, and they've given us spiritual tools, teachings, practices, holy mountains, holy mountains is the way that you, as it, you know, that yes. was one of the missions that he was given called Operation Starlight. Uh, and a store, a storage supply of a heightened spiritual energy that we can tap into. This coming into all the developers of the satellite known as satellite number three that enhances all spiritual action by a factor of 3,000 times. So they're helping us to help ourselves like a parent would love a child to help itself. But the child has been true or truck with or whatever. And you, we can't, they can't do the work for us, but they can help us do it for ourselves. You know, it is, a, I say often on this show, we live in very dystopian-like times, and I almost feel it is designed that way by nefarious beings in, in somewhat way, because I, although I do feel that there is a great awakening happening on this planet, I think there are more and more people that are starting to understand that we are more powerful than we think, that we are more, that we have the ability to manifest, to co-create. We are energy, we are vibration, that we should be raising our consciousness. I think there is that thread running through and is starting to expand um, out there in the in the online world, especially. I also think that, that there is forces that I don't know where they um, er originate. I don't know if it's from lower realms. I don't know if it's when, within our own society of just stupid, greedy, ignorant, rich people. I don't know. But I do know that I feel like they do whatever they can to keep people from figuring out who we are. That there is almost an intentional um, force that that keeps us distracted, keeps us uh, wallowing in hatred, keeps us ignorant, and keeps us um, from not looking within in order to figure out what and who we are. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you've given me. You've given me a, a yeah. very big plate to, 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 to digest, but it, 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 I mean, I, I, I absolutely agree. We've all been hoodwinked to a large extent. And, um, but again, we, as you said, we need to look within because it's by, it's, it, it begins with bravery. One of the great cosmic teachings that were given by these masters, um, is, is known as the nine freedoms, uh, which is the evil incinerate half that we're all of culminating um, with solar existence. And it's this a remarkable journey that we're on first of all on earth to attain enlightenment. That's why we're really here. We're here to attain enlightenment beyond that cosmic consciousness, beyond that ascension. We're out, we're here to do what Jesus demonstrated for every single one of us. It was nothing especially de different. Well, it was a lot different, but he's only more evolved. We're, we're part of that same evolutionary journey. And, um, the first of those freedoms is bravery. You, 
the, 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 is to have that bravery, the courage to uh, honor one's own intuitive sense, because that is the beginning of freedom. We, and without it, well, we're still powerless. While we still allow ourselves, we would, while we're still afraid, living in fear, then we're stuck. We can't move out. And you're absolutely right, for why is, we totally agree that there are, um, for one, for another, there are dark forces. There are, you know, as I mentioned, there are higher dimensions of the other planets and there are higher dimensions around this earth. But as I also mentioned, there are lower now because not all of us on this planet have, um, are, are good, you know, saintly people. Um, we've got you know, a tremendous amount, we've got war, we've got hatred, we've got, uh, you know, drunk and crying, um, greed you know, all the so-called daily sins. Um, and yes, it is to a lot, to a certain extent, if not a very large extent, yeah. manipulate by, um, because you can have, you can have advanced, uh, evolved intelligence, but you can also have advanced involved intelligence in those lower astral realms who are orchestrating and manipulating much of what takes place on the surface of this earth. And we're caught it. I mean, in a way, it's a scenario yes. of Lord of the Rings. Uh, but it's for us to sort of wake up and, bit and realize actually it's not fiction. We're part of something yes. fantastic. And when one comes into it, then life, be life becomes yes. a lie. Uh, and there are these darker things um, who have, you know, who have manipulated the situation. You could say is going back to Melbourne, certainly in, in through the Murat and Atlantis after this present death. And, um, a very big part of this change, this quickening that's taking place following the initiation of that, is these lower forces um, cannot, cannot, be, cannot exist in the so-called new world. I mean, part of the subtitle yes. of the book is the dawning of the new world. There is a dawn, you can, a new world is emerging, not just a new age, it's a new world. We have to choose whether we're going to be a part of it. And, um, and as in, in that sense, the cosmic masters have helped us and not only with giving us spiritual tools, but the very important part of the story, uh, the, the, the important part of the book is, um, how three adepts, three individuals took on human four, um, in disguise and they never, you know, basically went out of their way at all to, to say who they were and, Hey, look at me, I'm, 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 I'm the do. Because it's coming back to you, you're repeating it from sacred information. This is holy star. You know, it's not banned. It's, it's learned through initiation. And um, these intelligences, these three, as we refer to them as the adepts, have gone into the lower astral worlds to transmute the very worst aspects, um, including the intelligence we've known throughout biblical times as Satan. Um, that was a, the most powerful of these, um, black magicians, dark forces, um, that transmutation took place. It, it was the, actually was the primary main reason why these three adepts came all part of a greater cosmic plan, which is a chapter in the book, right? It's, it, 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 because it is all, there is, there is this greater cosmic plan. When Maldek happened, the, who were, Far more evolved intelligences, it couldn't fully enlightened, wonderfully depicted in the, in the nine freedoms. You know, it was like, um, as I again described it in the book, uh, when a wound is in, is incurred in the body. And in this case, the body of the solaces, the rest of the body works to heal it. And these intelligences, are uh, the, the highly advanced, evolved intelligences in our solar system had since worked to rectify the destruction of Malda and, and, and Earth because we're part of something, we're part of this galaxy, we're part of the Milky Way, which is, which is going back to Lania Kea, and that's the bigger picture. And this is sort of dealing with it at the micro scale, but each and every one of us are involved. We're all part of this conflict. Place. It is fascinating because it is, we are so much more part of the galactic picture than what people ever assume or think or believe. 
there's many, many, many people on the planet that don't even believe in aliens, UFOs, the possibility of intelligence mm -hmm. living within mm -hmm. uh, our, our arena to, to visit us or to be here with us. Again, there is also a growing number of people that absolutely are aware that we are not alone, that there are other galaxies, other beings, other aliens, both that are uh, of uh, humanity's friend and humanity's foe that um, are out there working with us. You know, there's many, many stories that our government has been involved with these uh, other beings since World War II, since the 50s, and we started to muck about with all of these atomic weapons, that that was when really we had the first serious interactions in our modern day life with other species and other planets. And it's really fan fascinating how much more complex and so much is more more is going on than we would ever could possibly imagine. It's very true. I mean, evil's been routed for a long, long time. Um, but when you say there's many people who are not aware of these things or deny these things or dismiss these things, indeed there are. Um, and, and the way the COVID masters describe it is there's a sorting of the wheat from the chaff, which is sort of biblical. Um, However, uh, it's, it, it's, um, not, you see, the more, the, the more what I suppose enlightened one becomes is it's not a case of just of saying, well, I'm all right. I'm, I know I'm a sect because I believe all this stuff and I'm going, you know, to, to, um, because the essence of it all, yes, is love. That, 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 that's the earth. and um, that is the, the energy of being, uh, that the cosmic masters are, are, are offering to us, generating in an enhanced way. I mean, it's, it, it's, the, it's the energy of creation, the energy of God, um, although a bit or varying sort of different frequencies, but it's still the same energy. And um, so, well, we're here to help the chap, you know, we're here to. To you, um, to be our brother's keeper, so to speak, because we don't, we you know, it's, um, as I say, we're not out just to save our own skins. We say, cause love, love will compel us to save the very worst amongst us because we recognize that within every one of us, there is that same divine yes. spark, which is why the cosmic masters do it for us. They could have left us to our own devices, but. The energy of love is what drives has is what drives creation. Actually, it's what drug and it already gets more and more and more incredible and fantastic. And that is a teak, beautifully, beautifully, beautifully described by the Master Jesus. Coming yes. back to Jesus, um, in a book in a in a book called the Twelve Blessings that we, um, as I mentioned earlier on, were were communicated through George King on 12 consecutive Sundays in England in 1958. And as I say, what drew me into the Ethereum Society, because as I say, I, I cut out Britain for Gospels. And Where yeah, can ahead, people can... pick up that book? Because I would like to read that book. Can people get? Well, you can get up to the Ethereum Society's okay. website. Um, but all, all of this stuff is available from the Ethereum Society. Um, Maya Maher, um, the 12 blessings, uh, and the nine freedoms and certainly the 12 blessings and the nine freedoms. Those are core teachings. And if they resonate, if they resonate, then I'd say to anyone, um, then you need to look further and deeper into the theory society. And I think the person would want to anywhere, um, because that, um, describe, you know, they go to the very core of what this whole thing's about. In terms of spiritual teaching. Let me ask you this. The Ethereum Society, um, how much out outreach do they do to, I mean, I guess you would call it educating people. I guess it would could be called getting the word out. I guess it could be called um, all types of things. But if 
if these foundational teachings are only available if you actually happen to come upon the society, I would it not make sense to be to put it to out to a greater audience on some other platform? Because I and and there may be a very good reason why it's not. Maybe not everyone is supposed to awaken at this stage and, and it is more like a calling situation or or what well, what what would be the reason for for instance the tapes that the 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 gold the the amazing i'm sure beyond enlightening informative exciting tapes that George Dr. King um was a part of throughout his life in these channeling sessions with the higher realms if that were not to be more publicized in a way that I understand the sacredness of it, but almost it seems like it could be a very great teaching tool in, in of sorts. Yes. I don't well, know. I'll see you in Christy. I, I mean, and, and that is precisely why I have yes. written my own Maya and I'm extremely grateful to publish it. But I uh, glad to be whoops. Well, we got to help publish it. Um, yeah. for taking it out. Um, because it's not as though the theorist science has ever tried right. to hide itself. We haven't. Uh, we've always, we've always gone out with, you know, uh, thousands of, of lectures, radio shows, et cetera. Um, however, the time was not right. Uh, you know, there's the same thing, a truth giving to a is as useless as one giving too late. Um, when you start talking about Jesus coming from the higher realms of Venus and speaking through this man, Dr. George King, you the vast majority of people are going to, to laugh and run, run away at the Vina and make fun of it. Um, so, um, you know, we've, we've had an art kill challenge, so just, um, it's not as though we haven't tried to plead it and see this, of course we have. Uh, but I see there's a growing urgency um, in the world to actually, uh, at, 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 you know, as well, we've had, you know, got the government, the US government, at least anyway, coming out with a revelation that actually, you know, this farm, it's far more open, you know, before it's been scoffed out and it's been little green man and all this, you know, excuses have been made. Well, those excuses can't be made anymore because you're having, you know, you, people in the military and in all walks of life are seeing things that just can't be dismissed. Um, so it's having to, to, to be revealed. And, um, so you, I think that you, everything, they call this age the exponential age. Everything is being speeded up, the good and the bad. And I, I think that, you know, the teachings that have been given to George King, people are, are will, will increasingly not only come across them, but will, will take them yes. serious. I, I agree with you. I think that the, we are at an age where people are more and more questioning what, what our world mm. is, what are we doing here? What is this purpose? There has to be more than going to a job till you're 65 and then maybe getting, you know, a, a, a retirement, maybe never retiring. And, you know, most of us are, are, um, you know, there's a lot of mental, el um, mental illness. There is a lot of mm -hmm. physical illness and there is a lot of, um, extreme depression, crime, low vibrational, um, negative energy, hatred, all of that seems to be heightened in our world. Yeah, I agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. It's a it very is. depressed world. It very is. Very unhappy world. Um, it's very hard. It, it, it's hard to find happiness, let, let alone joy, uh, you know, which is what it, should, what it all should. Um, and, it, 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 you know, if things certainly are speaking up, all as a consequence. Um, well, all as a consequence of Malik. All as a consequence of Lanny Epic. We need to understand, as I say, these, the, the, these goalposts, this framework into which we exist. It yes. is Lord of the Rings. It is very much Lord of the Rings. Um, and uh, there's a calling, but it comes back to that, that bravery, that inner, in, in that intuitive sense of hold on a minute. Uh, I, um, I, I've got to, you know, rethink yes. my life because things ain't right. And, and what I'm being told by, by the media and everything else, I'm not sure I believe it anymore. 
in the same way. And I, and it's, do I really, I, I can't stand my job. You know, I don't want to do it for another day, let alone, you know, the rest of my life, you know, but at the same time, I have to work, you know, we're caught up in this, what, this, um, um, materialistic overconsumption you know, of this, things we don't need. This school that no longer gives us any kind of, gives us, you know, it's just, it's, it's yeah. a struggle. Um, and you, you, the, the key, I mean, you, you, um, is to find that still small voice within, um, and to follow the thread, to see what it is not lead everybody to be serious and stuff. And maybe ultimately it will at least lead everybody to, 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 you know, the realization of beings who go on this earth and the earth is a little big, but that, you know, it's not, doesn't notice any, whatever, it, it, um, you come across. When I say you, the, uh, each of us as individuals come across that resonates in us, that sounds true, that we investigate, that continues to sound true. Um, go with it. You get it. Um, one of my favorite sayings, and I use it at least in the book once or twice, um, comes from, from Hamlet, the play Hamlet. Well, I say one, one of the play, well, one of the play role, um, yes. William Shakespeare. And the line is, there's a divinity which shapes our ends, rough hew them how yeah. we will. Well, we've all rough chewed our lives in one way or another. You know, we, we, we've all made a yeah. mess of them. And yet there's this overriding divinity, and I would call it karma. Yes. It's calm. It is always there. Without judgment, it may seem like judgment, it isn't judgment. If there's a word, another word for karma, it's love. That's the word for karma. Um, that is always guiding and steering and directing us back to our true inner self, to this, to this oneness. And, um, so it's there for each and every single one of us. We just have to be brave enough to hear it. You absolutely have to be someone that is not, um, concerned with group think with staying in your tribe with a fear of being ostracized you have to be able to be an independent thinker to step out of the box to listen to your interior and know that whatever lies within is your truth and not and not be concerned so much about what mainstream media is filling your head with from day to day and that does it does take bravery. That does take um, some intestinal fortitude, a level of confidence that many, I, Honest. honesty, hundred percent. That that many people, you know, they there's a lot of, especially we can just go into modern day religion, the the you know Christianity and Judaism, or, or you take your pick. It is all about putting your uh, giving your own power up to someone else, to something else, to fix it, to to um, lead you through. And I think that people don't understand that, that that is not where it's at. It's really about looking within your own power and, and, and listening to your own inner consciousness, you know, your compass to say that it, it's not about looking to somebody else to save you or praying to someone else to save you it's about saving yourself and having the own presence of mind to be in right well in in, in the 12 blessings um the, the, in, i think it's in the 12th blessing which is the blessing the 12 blessings is as i say we, we believe it it was given by jesus um not dead not sitting anywhere at the right hand of God. And just a, an interplanetary intelligence like yeah. the Buddha was, like Sri Krishna was, who came to this earth to help humanity and pick up went in our evolution. And uh, in the 12th, 12th blessing, which is a blessing to be absolute, um, he says, give yourself the ability to be of service and then be of service. But first of all, as you say, we've got to um, he heal or resolve yeah. ourselves. Uh, uh, but the, I did very briefly, but as I, as I said, the first of the freedoms is bravery. He's of the nine free. The second one is love. Because what's behind that 
intuitive sense of, of honesty and truth and consciousness or conscience uh, is love because it has the great energy of grief. Um, and that will lead one to be of service in coming back because you care. Um, you know, it, 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 the fact that another person doesn't, but well, you care about everything. We care about that, uh, the environment. We care about animals. We care about trees. We cut uh, plants, butterflies, uh, and our fellow human being, even those that uh, may not like one's fellow human, but, um, you know, one, one, one will find a word to be of service in one form or another. And that is yeah. the cards that will lead us to enlightenment. Yep. Yeah. In these I, I believe it is all about love and service to others. And I also think that if people were to do uh, more in service of others, they would find that it fills them up much faster and much and gives them a level of happiness that they may be surprised. Well, what, what, what little sign I saw some time ago that I really like, because if you want happiness for an hour, have an, if you want happiness for a day, go fishing. I think that's probably referring more to guys, probably for women go shopping. Um, if you want, if you want, if you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune mm. and if you want happiness for life yeah so well exactly and, and it's very very true it does have its own reward absolutely i totally believe that who who is mm -hmm. is there a beyond dr king the master is there a head of the Aetherius society that is of his of his ilk as far as the powerful psychic channel interdimensional being that he was or or what is the status of your organization now without uh, dr george king yeah um yeah he was he was the founder president he died in 1997 um and since then we're you know an, an international non-profit organization uh we have um, a board of directors, international directors. Um, we have a, 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 a synod because we were also a church, so to speak. We were a spiritual organization, have services regularly. Um, and so we are just democratically governed in that sense. Um, but there's no one, not even close to his caliber ilk whatever he was a would in fact we wouldn't just say he was a master we would have we we, we now not recognize if we had more we'd be it was that he's an avatar he was an avatar i don't know if i said who came into this he was one of those three adepts i was speaking about earlier who went into the lower astral world i mean it is a remarkable story it is and, and there's not one of us um, who even begins to come close, um, but we are, we, 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 we do our best. Um, you know, we aspire, we, 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 we aspire to, we recognize that's the path, that's our destiny, that's our heritage, and we do spiritual practices and practice yoga for that very purpose, but primarily to, um, to help, I, I guess, um, help humanity and awaken humanity to the, to these greater truths. That's amazing. And so I, I, you know, I, I think that you've sort of answered, but I'm going to see what else you have to say is the, is the true purpose behind you writing this book now in the year of 2024, it is to finally put this story out into the greater world. So people that are willing to hear it, that can, that it resonates with, that it speaks to, will finally start their own path of figuring truth in this world. Yeah, that's exactly why I wrote it. Um, it's not as though we hadn't been putting out books. We have, and um, but the the on the whole on the whole, they've not been. I think this is an exception in terms of being published by 
an organization other than the Ethereum Society itself. Um, I use a quote in the book from, from an English poet um, called William Blake, um, the people of the UOV. And he, William Blake said, if you tell the truth in a way that it can be understood, it will be believed. And that's what I've attempted to do with my, because it is a complex story. And it's too all too easy to dismiss it and blow it away. It's too, it's too important. It's too sacred. It's too real. It's too profound to be blown away. It needs to be heard. It needs to be heard. So I've attempted um, to tell it in a way that it can be understood. And judging by you, I think I've done it rather well because you get go go that terribly good I, I, I really, you know, I well. enjoyed the book very much. I found it to be fascinating and I found it to be true. And one of the other things that I really appreciated that you do throughout the book is that you will say something fantastical and then you will say right after, I know this sounds crazy. I know this sounds hard to believe. I know that this seems completely off my rocker stuff here. And you basically admit that the average reader who reads this is going to think you're, you know, out of your mind, inauthentic, uh, lying. You know, there's so many cynical people out there that just are so easily to dismiss people because they feel like they know more. They, you know, that can't be true. There's no, there's a, there's a lack of critical thinking out there in the world in general. And um, yeah. what I I find you to be extremely authentic. I found the book to be extremely fantastical. But I also am somebody that has been trotting down this path now for the last couple of years. So many of the concepts that you are going into, not all of them. There was a lot that I learned in this book for sure. But... Some of the basic mm -hmm. concepts are threads that I've been running into when I speak to many spiritual people about metaphysics, about esoteric right. stuff, about energy, about oneness, about being connected, right. all of that. Now, I learned much more about, obviously, your specific society, um, the master, Dr. King, adepts. Um, there were right. teachings. I didn't realize that Jesus had other books that he had put out for us to learn from. You know, I, I'm interested in reading those teachings. I thought it was just so um, fantastical and amazing that, that these operations were going on around us that most humans wouldn't even completely dream of, that, 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 that mm -hmm. it seems straight out of a sci-fi novel and, and quite frankly it should be i mean can you imagine if they did a tv series on the operations that dr king did and i know that is a very taking the sacredness taking the importance taking the the seriousness out of this but it also is a way to transmit it into the human consciousness and like no other, because that is the media that people absorb these days. Yeah, well, we need to reclaim this. Yes, I agree. Uh, uh, the, the sense of, of, uh, yep. of the divine. And, and, and if we did by a significant number of people, we would, we, the world would yes. be transformed. And in terms of, yes, the, how, how I did write the book, I mean, yes, I'm taking people on a journey, and uh, but I need to yes. hold their hand. And what uh, and when I said they're getting squeamish, then I just need to hold their hand a little bit more firmly uh, through through that path. Hold, hold it, don't run away, don't run away. Just stay with this new and and and, and, to, and take with through it because um yes, it is mm -hmm. fantastic, um, but but you know, God is fantastic. It's all yes. utterly fantastic. It's all, um, in, in, in the 12 blessings, um, I need to give a sound all this all Sunday. Um, but, um, when, sh which is a cosmic extension to the Sermon on the Mountain, it says not even the Supreme Lords of all creation, who brought all of this into manifestation, not even the Supreme Lords of all creation can do justice to the mind. The, to the picturization of the magnificence of God. 
with pop, I mean, the, you know, the, uh, coming back to the James Webb Web Space Telescope, they're stymied. They're roughly stymied because they, and, and they're being forced, which is the irony and the humor of it, but they're being forced to accept something yeah. un namely God. I mean, it, they're, 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 they're being dragged against all their wishes, but it, what is this unknown intelligence literally cannot be measured, described in any form. And that's what we're a part of. It is fun. We are part of something, man. Uh, and it's time to, yes. to step into it, to step into it and take it with full bravery, open heart, uh, love, glory, amazement. That's, that's our heritage. That's what yeah. is awaiting us. That's why I've written yeah. like long. I love that. And it couldn't have come at a better time because I do feel we are just trouncing down the same path of self-destruction um there you know it, it, for some reason humans can't seem to evolve past very barbaric ways of being we're very as much as we think we're highly intelligent and we're so advanced and we're you know technology uh, we're technologically advanced and all of these great things and we've created all this wealth which i think has really been the demise not the thing that's lifted us up i think it's the thing that's corrupted everything mm -hmm. is this increasingly huge mm -hmm. amount of wealth we have created that is just a house of cards amongst all of that at the end of the day i don't believe we are furthering ourselves down this evolutionary path of learning how to be with each other and understand each other and accept each other for who we are without our incessant need to dominate, to feel superior, to be over-competitive. All of these things that are selfish, are greed. And poor Mother, Mother Earth, Mother Gaia, is just been ravaged by our lack of holding her sacred, not taking more from her than what we need, polluting her and... I mean, it is really, we are at a precipice where we are going to self-destruct yet again, or we are going to understand that there is a new path out there that we could take that is going to lead to love, to harmony, to really embracing who we are, how magical it is to be mm -hmm. here and living on this planet at all. And I, you know, I'm rooting for us that, you know, I'm rooting for us, Paul. I am. I just, I don't know. And I'm rooting for us, um, to, to, um, Christy and, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist. I mean, I'm in no doubt that, um, truth or goodness will prevail. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, what humanity needs to do is they need to get in touch with the things they knew before yes. they were born and, uh, bring, get, yeah, kind of back to Lord of the Rings. Are you full, full, I, I, I've, I've read, read the, the book. I, I, the book. I, I have all the movies on disc still. It's like my favorite, it, tr you know, my favorite. Well, you, you, you'll know who I mean, who, who, who the yes. ants are, right? The ants, the trees, of course. right? I like to think of myself as an ant. I'm a huge ant. And, you, 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 and, I'm, and, and <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to get annoyed and upset and That's piss right. us off. Because That's we're right. going to come out and we're going to, you know, we're, 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 we're normally ruin peaceful characters. But, um, yeah, uh, I think that, that we want to see this, this uprising of humanity. Not uprising. You see, again, this is an... Uh, People say, well, if they exist, these UFOs, ETs, why don't they just come and hover over Los Angeles or whatever? And, and if, if my answer to that uh, is because, well, I think if that, if that was the case, um, you'll, you'll remember living in Los Angeles, we had the Rodney King riots. Uh, what, what would come out of that after, um, is that is I think would become sort of rioting, looting, destruction, because, well, we know they exist and you guys are, are we're, we've had enough and we're taking over and you get lawlessness within a very short, and you get chaos and you get panic and you get, you get killing and you, that's, they don't want, that, that's not what they're about. 
They, we need to intuitively awake. They've been incredibly subtle. Another thing I used to be into was mm. crop circles. Yeah. We've seen it, it, you know, very, very subtle. These incredible formations showing up overnight. Um, just the artist, the brilliance. I mean, it's very subtle. It's there to awaken. And it's like these sightings. There's nothing clear and obvious that we, you know, told you so. That they're, uh, they're pinpricks. They're causing us to sort of question and, yes. and awaken and um, do all of this, not in a violent way. They are not, they are utterly opposed to all forms, all forms and violence. Um, it's yeah. love, it's kindness, it's understanding, all of those things. That's how it needs to be. Uh, the next revolution will be a revolution. Well, I mean, love. it's almost like they have to treat us as children because that's kind of how we act in a bizarre way. We're, we're very fearful. When you think about human behavior, we are so fearful. Everything scares us, triggers us, makes us mm -hmm. go into our, I don't know if it's our reptilian brain that, that, that makes us go straight to fear, but it almost at every level when somebody experiences something different, something new, something they haven't seen, it is not curiosity. It is fear that they go to, you know, if there was a mm -hmm. UFO that came upon LA, it's not curiosity. People would automatically get fearful. They would be scared to death and they're coming to, you know, Some would. I think, I think it was more in the past. I'm less sure about that now. I mean, obviously, yes, some people would be fearful, um, but you know, it's, 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 but of our, it's, it's come into our culture. Unfortunately, these beings are sort of, these aliens tend to be depicted as, yes. as aggressive and warlike. And so if, but it, um, the cosmic masters, what, these are the Jesuses. These are the Buddhas. These are the people. These are the, they are extraterrestrial in that sense of the way we sort of, they're not a bizarre, is a better word for it, put it fully. Um, and they're just high, they're extremely evolved. No, I mean, we're, 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 that's within our own solar system. Um, there are, there are, as it goes into in the book, um, aggressive galaxies. You know, we are, you know, it's, it, this Lord of the Rings conflict is good yes. versus you extends way beyond just this earth. We're, we're, we're very fortunate to be a part of an extremely evolved and benevolent, not only solar system, but galaxies. Um, but that doesn't mean to say the whole of creation. You, you mentioned in the book, the Gotha system and how Gotha Gotham. had to, uh, they, um, Dr. King and the other adepts went and had to go and help them save their own system from lower vibrational evil, you know, entities. That's right. You know. Yeah. Yeah, very full of mouth story, yes. I believe, but uh, it's fantastic. Sounds but uh, uh, no, that's right. Um, there are uh, alien, uh, aggressive alien forces. There is this conflict. I mean, um, yes, throughout throughout what, creation. What, in your opinion, in in your all of your knowledge through knowing all of these really intricate operations and what's happening intergalactically, what do you feel is the main reason why they're what is the aim of the darker realms lower realms what is their goal to take everything over to make everything as bad as possible what 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 moves them i know that the other side love moves them understanding compassion empathy consciousness what mm -hmm. what is the force behind the other side it's a very really big question, and I think it play, it's playing out throughout it, it, all, all this earth as well. Right? Uh, and I think that apart from it originating from ignorance, this sort of, you know, this, this adoption of free will and separation from God, but it's becoming incredibly uh, involved. It's becoming incredibly idiotic. Instead of e e evil, incredibly involved. But, um, and I think uh, it's it's above everything, um, a craving, a, 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 um, what's the word? An addiction, um, to power. 
It's, an, it's become an addiction to power. Uh, and, um, it, you know, we, it, it is playing out, it has played out on this, it, 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 when it's the addiction, because it never satisfies. What all we know, you got more wealth, right. I want even more wealth. I've got more control, I want yep. even more control. I want complete control. And having got control of the, of the world, of the planet, well, now we go beyond this planet. I want control of this system and I want control of this, gal of this galaxy. And so it's, it's an addiction, it's a lust uh, for, 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 for power. Uh, I, you see, ultimately, um, I mean, and the Gotha system, the, um, the Gotha mission, uh, culminates in the most magnificent way, I actually say in the book that it was written up by Dr. Cleaning in, in, in the Zero Society Useless, as the greatest story ever told. Um, and it literally was. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, these were, these were talking about transmissions, actions that were communicated through Dr. George King while he was in a positive yogic somatic trance by the master of theories who was acting almost like a commentator on the action that was being played out. I mean, it, it, it yes. is utterly fantastic. It is utterly fantastic. And yeah, it's true. Uh, and, and, um, it call it, it, it the, God is the force of good. And goodness, the, 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 the ridiculousness of it is that it can never ultimately prevail because it's, it's all an ass. It's a, it's a deluded aspect of the same thing called God. There's nothing that is not of God. Even the worst of the worst of the worst originated from God and ultimately will go back to God. And in the meantime, we're playing out in this scenario. I mean, we don't even have enough time to cover the book the way it should be covered, but, but we, we we'll exactly, which is we'll why read. I really encourage you to pick it up. It is not a hard read. It's not, um, it's not like it, it is a, it will capture you. It will capture you. It will pull you in and it will make you think about, I've said so many times on this podcast that I don't think that we have ever been told what our real history is about who we, who we are or where we come from. I've said it so many times. And quite frankly, this is the first guest that I've had on my show that has given me an alternative story to the history of who we are and where we came from. And, and from a perspective that I found to be extremely authentic and true, and it makes as crazy and as fantastical and out there as it sounds, and you're right, it does. It rings true to me. It rings more true than the stories that we have been told since I was. I could yeah. cry, Christy. But, but what would I thought would be well, but I'll, I'll res <laughs> refract and restrain myself. But what you said is more than music to my um, ears. It's, it, it's, it, 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 it means a lot because this book has meant a lot. I'm to sure. Me. The writing of the book has has met, you know, it's one of the things that I say that I, I knew before I was born, that it was, it was part of my destiny with the will be to write this book, to share this information and to, you mean, it's only been out for uh, a week or so, not even two weeks. Um, and to hear someone such as yourself speak of it in that way, um, gosh, you actually will have a drink tonight and, uh, the pool. Well, I don't know a better way that to wrap up the show than that. I will let you have your drink and I say cheers to you, Paul. Well done. And I actually am in thinking about going over to the Aetherius Society and checking it out because, like I said, I'm 10 minutes. I probably have driven by it a million times. I, I mean, I don't know. Mm. But um, I can't thank you enough for coming on. We had such an enlightening conversation that was just so informative. And I hope people at least listen to this podcast and open their mind a little bit to pick up that book and read, read it. 
read it for yourself and see if it resonates with you at all. Needless to say, they can get it from Amazon. But, um, it's but uh, hopefully in time it will be in bookstores as well. I wish you nothing but success with this book, and I know it has changed me fund- fundament- fundamentally. And I will be walking in the world with a different set of eyeballs. And um, I I can't thank you enough. Let's mm-hmm. if you ever have anything else that you want to come on to talk about, I could talk about this stuff endlessly it's fascinating to me well i'll leave that with you christy when you get you know sometime down the line when you got a vacancy and uh, delighted with love go on and continue it i mean we thing. really could go another hour on this topic but we'll go ahead and leave it there gang thank you paul nugent and I'm going to leave the, the sh- in the show notes, I'll leave the link to the book. Pick it up, read it, investigate who you are, walk with a different lens on your eyeballs, and we will all see you on the other side. And that is a wrap on this episode of Fate, guys, from Atheism to Enlightenment. I will see you next week. Thank you, Paul Nugent. Journey you, well, Christy. everyone. Bye-bye. Alrighty, gang. That is a wrap on this episode of Fate from Atheism to Enlightenment. I mean, this episode, this is the first episode I've done uh, on this sort of topic before. Um, It was pretty epic as far as the material that we were trying to get through. And I really don't think unless you actually read the book, you could truly understand who Master George King was, what the Aetheria Society is, uh, what role Paul played in it, and what is the overall mission that they have. You really, truly need to read the book and um, digest the material. And then, like we said in the podcast, see if it resonates with you. See if this is something that rings true to you. At the end of the day, my little inner being, my little intuition, my little thoughts were that it was true. And it sounds incredibly fantastical, magical, even outrageous. It does. And and I agree with that. And Three or four years ago, I would probably have disregarded it myself. I think you need to be in a certain space where you're open to hear this kind of information if you're going to hear it. And it is a space in which you finally come to an understanding that you don't really have it all figured out and that you are open to hearing other forms of information that are not mainstream. I have certainly learned more than my fair share of things over the last two and a half years while I've been on my own journey that would not have resonated with me just a couple of years ago, just a few years ago. And it does now. And this particular story, it might there was just nothing inside of me that didn't think that Paul was completely authentic and being true to himself and being true to me. And if you read the book, it rings true as well. Now, where does this take us? I don't know. I don't think tomorrow I'm going to go out and be involved in the Aetherius Society. I don't think that that is my path, but what I do think is that we are on a precipice of either blowing ourselves up again or realizing who we are. And I do believe that we are much more intergalactic and that there are other dimensions and that There has been masters that have come down to try and illuminate us as to what and who we are. 
It is just, we are, when you get down to it, a very une unevolved species for a myriad of reasons, some of which is not our fault, some of which is we come here and we get very much programmed to fit in a certain cog in a certain wheel, and we're supposed to run on it until we die. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, and it's very hard to think anything else when we are very easily manipulated. We are very easily pushed into a certain direction based on whatever we're feeling in that moment because we just react to our emotions. That is why advertising is such an incredibly outrageously billions and billions of dollars a year enterprise because it works. Subliminal messages works. We are easily influenced little animals. And until we take control back of our own critical thinking skills and stop relying on someone else to tell us how to think, whether it be a social media person, the news, your pastor, your priest, Quite frankly, I don't think that's the way to go either. I think you need to go on your own internal journey and figure out who you are, who you want to be, what you're doing here, what your sole purpose is, all of those things. So it's a tough pill to swallow, this story. I'm not going to lie. I was reading it. I was having moments of, come on, are you what? And he acknowledges that everyone is going to have these moments. It doesn't mean that it's any less true. It just means that, like I keep saying, there's so much more going on out there in our reality than what we really understand. And until we are shaken a little bit, to our core, to awaken, to rediscover, to go through whatever that eye-opening eye traumatic event that kicks us into a space where we can open ourselves to new information, I don't know if it'll happen. I, I certainly don't think that one hour and a half podcast is going to um, change everything for you, but maybe it will prompt you to get the book. It's like, it's, I think it's less than 200 pages. It goes into a lot of information in there, but it is not a 500 page, very hard read. It's not. And I mean, it is some pretty fantastical Lord of the Rings kind of material that you're going to read. And I do think it should be a movie, even though it would lose its sacredness. I mean, people would, I can just, I can see the movie. I mean, people would love it. It was just beyond fiction. It was, it was stranger than fiction, I guess you could say. Um, anyways, folks, that was a lot. It was a lot of, it was a lot. <laughs> I hope it doesn't um, turn you off to the uh, possibility. Like, you know, sometimes people go over a certain line. They're like, okay, I, I can't come back from here. Like, I, I hope that's not the case. I hope that I have uh, listeners at this point that are willing to take that journey to open their mind. It's, it's, it's only going to bring you um, information you've never had before, and it's going to enlighten you a little bit. So I say read the book and do your own research and figure out what resonates with you and go with your heart. It's all anybody can do in life. And, and, and that's Maggie. If you hear the dog barking, that's Maggie. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I can be reached on Instagram at S period, A period, T period, E period podcast. Go ahead, 
please do let me know what you thought about this show. This was one of a kind. I'm not sure if we're ever going to have a show that is going to go through this kind of material again, but I hope so. I really do. Let's figure it out together. Um, Alrighty, guys. If you like what I'm saying, if you love what I'm doing here, tell a friend, like, share. You know the story. And on that note, as always, welcome to your fate, everyone. I'll see you next week. Journey well.